So I'm Caroline Watkins. When I was at school, I was Caroline Pope. And from school, I went into nurse training and then I went back to university a bit later in my 20s. I got my degree and then ended up um, getting first into uh, dementia research, but then into stroke research where I've spent most of my life doing. I did maths, biology, chemistry and general studies at a level with very little revision, I think. I got a B in my biology, uh, which I loved, and uh, the teacher that we had for biology was absolutely fantastic. Uh, and I did pure maths with statistics, uh, and I did marvellously well at statistics. Uh, I'm still very passionate about statistics now, pure maths. Uh, I never really engage with very much. Fortunately, I'm a very uh, practically focused studier. Um, so I did really, really well in the statistics at school. I enjoyed it when I went to university. Um, and I'm a member of the Royal Statistical Society now because um, those things fascinate me. And I, I, th I suspect my pure maths teacher would be quite entertained to think how well I've done with statistics really, I suppose. I really loved sport. I was in every team, I think, probably uh, hockey, netball, tennis, um, we did badminton. So I always had one of those tails at the back of your skirt for being in the sports team of some description. So I really liked that. I mean, there was a huge emphasis in engaging in, in sport. And one of the sports teachers, Miss Lane, was, she was just fantastic at encouraging you in everything really. And, uh, and we had good fun. So it was hard work, but good fun as well. The other thing that I enjoyed a lot was um, we used to do a skit on the teachers. I forget what year it was when we did it, but um, it was performed in the gym because we used to have all the assemblies in the gym. And we used to yeah, do that in there and everybody actually did skits on all of the teachers. So they got dressed up and some people were just amazing at um, taking off some of the teachers and the teachers themselves. You could see they were crying, laughing at the side, you know, because people were probably being quite rude about them. But, um, but it was good fun. I think it was all taken in good humour and uh, yeah, it was fun for both staff and pupils, I think, really. I mean, I, I have a lifelong friend from, from school, so uh, I met Denise Forshaw when I was 11 and uh, we were good friends all the way through school. She went off and did nurse training at the same time as I did. Uh, and although we went our separate ways for a bit, I met up with her later at Myrtle Street on nights when I was at university and was doing nights to fund myself and uh, she was a night sister. Uh, and a very scary night sister at that. But uh, we got back back to sort of seeing each other more and um, and now she's in my team at UCLan and uh, she's the, or well, I'm the director of the clinical trials unit and she's the deputy director. But really she, she runs the place and everybody thinks it's quite entertaining that we've known each other quite a long time. I lead one of the biggest stroke research teams in the whole world. We do very practical research, so we don't do things that are gosh how interesting. Nobody in my team does that. If they can they can do something which looks at people's experiences and how people have felt about things, but at the end of the day we have to take that information and do something useful with it. So we do applied health research. So everything is about changing the stroke care pathway, basically whether we're trying to help think about how we can implement different interventions. So we have to understand the context in which they're being done. We have to understand the people that are involved, both in terms of health and social services staff, um, and what their perspectives are uh, and their challenges are in delivering particular interventions. And we also have to understand the patient and carer's perspective as well. Um, and unless we take account of all those things, then we'll never change anything. People always say that it takes 15 years or something to change things in the NHS. Well, I believe you could change it quicker if we got more smart about understanding 
um, how things need to be implemented. So we've done research around emergency stroke pathways in terms of finding different ways of getting messages across to the public to spot stroke and then to ring 999. We've done work with the stroke specialist knowledge and skills of the people at the front end um, and to make people with those skills available. So we've done research around the introduction of the telestroke network across the northwest. We've done research on positioning, um, how to position people in hospital, how to spot swallowing problems so that the patients don't come into hospital, have a swallow screen and then put meal by mouth for days and days without having anything to eat and drink, um, not just upsetting for them but also for their relatives. So um, we've been trying to develop ways of not just screening people, but then getting a more detailed assessment so you can move people into solid food and um, some sort of modified drink. Because lots of patients get dehydrated in hospital and we want to try and avoid that. No, it was lovely. I mean, the whole... Well, I, I couldn't believe it anyway in the first place. You know, when this letter came through, I opened it and uh, we were just in the kitchen. Everything happens around our kitchen table, I think, really. You know, just everybody piles in, cups of tea. And uh, so <laughs> it's Kevin, my husband, and Josh, my son, sitting there. And I opened this. And I said, oh, goodness. Um, perhaps not as politely as that. Um, <laughs> and then I said, Kevin, just read that for two minutes does it really say what i think it says that i'm going to be knighted and he said really give me that oh, yeah. so it was just completely out of the blue absolutely amazing and my mum was just over the moon couldn't stop telling everybody you know making you cringe but when the day we had at, at the booking palace it was just absolutely fantastic you know we could see there was this big staircase on the left so this this very smartly dressed man came over to my mum and said because um, she's 98 um walks with a stick um and said you know would you like to use the lift instead of going up the stairs and she said oh no i think i'll be all right he said well you know the queen doesn't let everybody use her lift um you know, and she would be quite happy, I'm sure, if you used it. So my mum went, well, if the Queen uses that lift, then perhaps I should. So we, <laughs> so they went, we all went in this lift upstairs and actually it worked really well because it meant that we bypassed all these other queues of people going in and entered up upstairs. They whisked me off to a separate room because you had to have a practice somewhere else and um, those three all got taken into the room where the ceremony was going to take place and of course because they'd overtaken the queues they got right on the front row. <laughs> I just couldn't believe how choreographed it all was. We all had to go in a room and get told exactly what we were supposed to do, what we were not supposed to do. Um, and then, you know, you were worrying about that when, as you were waiting, as I was stood in the door, uh, waiting to go in, um, had to remember all the instructions, you know, we had to sort of go round the back and then come in so that you were sitting down then uh, on the bonquette. I've never heard of a bonquette before, but apparently it was a bonquette that you sat on. And I was right near the front as well because I'd gone, gone in so early. Um, and then Ray Davis from the Kinks, um, the Kinks was a bit before my time, but I had I did know who he was, and he came and sat down next to me. So I felt very honoured having Ray Davis next to me, um, and we sat there and watched absolutely everybody else then come through, you know, uh, and it was just lovely, just a lovely, lovely day. Really, I felt very, uh, very proud. Um, and uh, yeah, eternally grateful to the people that wrote that letter. Must have been a good letter. But, uh... Oh yeah, I mean, I was really pleased to be invited. And I have to say I was a little concerned about, you know, what, what it was going to be like. You know, I mean, obviously I, I talked to big audiences about my research, but coming back and 
going to talk about <laughs> what you know lessons for the future seemed um, yeah quite a scary thing but I have to say they were very lovely and listened intently as I was wittering on about uh, the things I do and uh, you know what messages I'd like to give it was really nice and going back into that room that's a library now which used to be the sixth form common room felt like quite a natural thing to do really it didn't feel so I think that they should have a think, a good think themselves about what they want to do, not worry too much about where that's going to lead them in the future, because it is important that you, you follow your own passions, I think. It has to be their choice. Um, it has to be that they don't feel that this choice defines them forever, um, and that they're getting on a uh, a course from which there is no way they can deviate and they only have to stick to that one route um, because you can you can always change what you do and I think when you talk to most people most people have have changed what they thought they were going to do uh, and that's important and it's important to be committed to things if you commit to something then you should try very hard you have to understand that there will be things that are difficult along the way, but most of the time you can work your way through them and carry on with whatever it is. But sometimes you know that things aren't quite right uh, and that commitment is challenged. Um, and sometimes it's challenged for a reason that means you have to change what you do. It's the same whether it's a job, whether it's a relationship, whether it's anything else really. If you know that something's really not right, then you should do something and change it, talk to somebody about it. And that is a strength, not a weakness.